Okay, hello. I wanted to show you how to um, construct your frame for your batik. Um, it's a little bit different than your, uh, how you did your um, fluid painting and your acrylic. Um, so I'm not gonna go over the part of actually cutting the wood. Um, however, the size of the wood needs to be uh, pretty exact. Um, it's gonna be 18 inches um, wide because that is the size of your cubby. Um, if you go much bigger than that, um, it might not fit in, which means you'd have to do the whole thing over again. So, so be very uh, aware of that. Um, and then the depth of it is 28 inches. Um, so it'll stick out a little bit uh, beyond inside of your cubby, um, but it's, it's, it kind of is what it is. Um, so I already have that all cut um, right here. I'm gonna angle the camera down so you can see how it's constructed. Okay, so here's my two boards. Again, these are 18 inches wide. These are 28 inches um, uh, um, in, in length. So first thing is, you gotta make sure that you arrange these correctly. So when I set this up, if I put this board, you know, on the outside, you can see this a little bit better. If I stick it like this, you're gonna be adding on, um, I think three fourths of an inch on both sides, which means it will no longer fit inside of your cubby. It has to be like this. So it's gonna be kind of like a, a T on this end of it. Um, and same thing on this side. So it's super important that your width, as I was saying earlier, is 18 inches. If you throw that on there, it will no longer be 18 inches, it will no longer fit inside your cubby, and unfortunately at that point, you will have to start all over again, okay? So make sure that's set up correctly. Um, next, I'm gonna pull out our brad nail gun. Um, just as a refresher, you know, there's a button right here, you push this, that'll kick this out. You double check your size of your brads. Um, the brads we're using are our inch and a quarter. Um, and it says thick frame. So that's the ones that we're gonna be using. Um, I'm over putting that, it's like, yep, I got the right size. Stick this back inside of here. So I'm good on that part of it. I'm gonna take my board, put this glue on. Put that against here. Remember, oh, I screwed up already. Um, put it like that. I'm going to turn this so it's easier for me to nail that in. And then I got a brad nail that in place. Again, 18 inches wide. Again, just for safety, make sure that you keep your hands away from this. You never want to kind of cover this up and, and brad nail it right there. Um, you can hold this in place with your arms or your fingers really wide apart. It's not that hard. Stick this in and then pull your trigger. And then, so I would put down three in each spot, okay? Do the next one. If you wanna scoot up in the video and just kind of bypass this, if you know what I'm doing, um, go for it. Otherwise, um, you can just kind of watch me. Again, hand away. Okay, put in glue and glue. Keeping that in place. Okay, and your board is construct constructed. Uh, next thing that we're gonna talk about is is your design because you do not want to put your um, fabric on here <clears throat> until you are um, until you have your design all drawn out on top of it. So thank you for your time. Okay, next part of your project, you are going to kind of determine the area that your design is going to be in. Um, we are going to be drawing on this paper, and then you're going to transfer it over onto your fabric. And then we kind of get into the part where we use hot wax and dyes for your design. Um, so you're going to spend a couple days, you know, coming up with your design and you kind of get that. So once you have your frame made, because everybody's a little bit different, um, you need to trace it out. Um, and what I would do in this case is that your design has a tendency to kind of wrap around the whole thing, but we're going to stay within the inside part of here. So I'm going to take my pencil um, and I'm going to just draw a line along the inside of this. 
so I know where my design's gonna be at. Um, hopefully you can see that line. Um, otherwise, I'm not gonna use the marker, but you <laughs> saw me do it, so you should be able to kind of come up with it. Um, so now design-wise, you have, you have two options. You can draw it in a portrait orientation like this, or you can flip it around, and you can do a landscape orientation. Um, you, you should have already kind of worked through your worksheet. You should have an idea of what you want to do. Um, now it's a matter of transferring the design over onto this. Um, now I might have already explained a couple times with batiks, um, you want to um, stay pretty um, general with your shapes because when you pour the hot wax onto this, or if you're an all virtual student, you're going to be using a washable glue, um, it will spread a little bit. Like a, it's not quite a quarter, and it's not a quarter of an inch. It's like an eighth of an inch. Um, so you can't get extreme detail in here. This is not, you know, like a drawing where you have a super fine, uh, like paintbrush and be able to do that. This is um, something that's going to be a little more bulky. Um, it's just kind of the, 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 the technique um, that you'll have to use with this. So in the sheet, you know, I talked about having a, a certain number of shapes. You want to make sure you um, shoot for that. Um, I can't remember if it was like 40 or 50 shapes. Um, so, you, so you can start coming up with, with your design. Um, just real quick. Um, I guess I will go in. Maybe I'll have this shape right here. Um, you can always work with uh, text that's on here. Um, maybe I want to draw, um, you know, a shape over here, maybe like, like a sun. So I'm trying to draw dark so you can see. I'm gonna go grab a marker. So I have a marker instead. Redraw these lines out so you can see a little better. Um, and just a heads up, this is not gonna be a good design because um, I haven't thought about it. I'm just kind of coming up with something right now just to teach you a couple techniques you wanna be aware of. Because um, it's, about, it's about shapes, not about lines. Because um, I have this line coming in and if I stop right there, that's fine, but you have to decide on what color this line is gonna be, which means you're probably gonna have to end up turning this into a shape. Now again, you gotta think about this will become wax, and I like using a marker. You're gonna use a pen to, to sketch it out, but then you will go in with a marker when you're all done, because um, this, is, this is a little on the thin side with your wax. Um, so you, you could put a, a, a wax line on here. Remember, anything you wax is gonna be white. Um, but I wanna kinda have a series of colors that are gonna go through here, um, and I like the idea of actually coming all the way down so I'm gonna go all the way down here. Now I want this to be a color in here. So I'm gonna come in. Now I have a range of uh, colors in this section. And I'm gonna come along here. Again, this is not gonna be an amazing design. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is way too bare. Okay, so I have this part of the design done. Um, remember, I just uh, double checked. Um, you do need um, 40 to 50 um, shapes, and I'm sorry, this is upside down, um, on this. So you gotta, it's like, what, what does that mean? Um, I'm not gonna actually put numbers on here, but I'm gonna start um, right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So as of right now, I have 13 shapes. Um, minimum is 40. Um, so you have to go in and try to figure out how you can continue adding in color or adding in shapes. Um, so the first off is like, I'm trying to figure out right now, what is this? Um, it might be, maybe I'll turn this into the earth um, kind of thing. So this might be a little more um, like an outer space theme. Um, so I'm going to break this shape up. Um, so this might be like the atmosphere somehow. Um, Maybe I'll add in, this is, this is gonna be some weird continent right there. So that might be browns, this might be blues. Um, so 13, um, 14, 15, 16. Um, look at the sun. I always like these shapes. This is why you do it in pencil. So if all of a sudden you want to change your design, you can. 
Um, Cause I would probably rework this. I try to get this a little more centered, but, but I think I'm gonna run with this. Um, I'm not super crazy about how this ends um, so abruptly. So I might go out, you know, and treat this as one, you know, one shape. No, that's kind of dumb. Um, maybe I'll make sure that Yeah, I gotta think about that because I'm not super crazy about how that's turning out. But again, that's why you do it in pencil first. And this is getting small. Um, you definitely don't want to go much smaller than this because again, this will all be hot wax. So you're gonna have a kind of a small area here to put the dye. Okay, so design wise, um, I definitely need to kind of consider this a little bit more. Um, but now I have these huge areas. Um, so let's figure out how many I got so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So I need at least 17 more shapes um, to do this. Now, if I wanna continue out with this linear design, um, I would kind of double what I have right there, which was I think 11. Um, so that'll give me six more shapes to kind of play with. So, um, so what I'm kind of debating is like, should I continue with the rays or should I kind of do shapes within there? Um, again, that's why you're doing pencil, but let's um, kind of play around with shapes first. Um, so maybe I could have these, um, these circular um, shapes um, that are in here. And if it goes beyond the 50, um, depending on how tight you have that design, that might be okay. Um, if you get really um, tight with it, and it ends up being like the same situation we have over here where they're just gonna to be too small. Um, I, I definitely wanna kind of chat with you about um, getting rid of things. So see, it was 17, so 23 um, more shapes. Um, so 23, 22, 21. Um, no, that's not right, because I had 23 total. I need the 17 more shapes. So um, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So obviously um, I would get to 40 pretty quick. Um, so I'm not, I don't like that. Um, and part of me is, you know, glad I'm kind of going over the design process because this is what artists and designers do. You throw down an idea, you look at it and say, nope, that really does not look good. You erase it, try something different. Um, uh, right now, I don't like this. Um, I think I'm probably end up going, you know, and just doing more lines. You know, um, if I did this in pencil, I might end up, you know, putting a spaceship here instead. Um, so we're gonna pretend that this isn't here. You know, maybe fun to have kind of a cool spaceship and maybe some kind of a tractor beam, you know, if you're into, into space. Um, this area will be a little on the, on the empty side. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe in this corner, um, <laughs> I'm gonna throw an alien in. You know, so obviously these lines would not be there. Um, so he's looking at, at the earth. So then, so I'm starting to like the idea. I definitely have to go back and erase, you know, some of this other stuff. But again, I'm going for this 40 or 50 uh, design idea. Once that is done, you need to go over. So once your drawing is done in pencil, you have to go over it in, in pen. Um, and the reason why is you have to lay your fabric over top of that. Um, and I'm gonna show you that, that next. Okay, in this demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to cut your fabric um, for, your, for your batik. Um, so you should have, you, should, you might have to ask me, I, hopefully I'll tell you in class where to find your fabric at. Um, there are old bed sheets um, that we get donated. Um, if you really get into batiks, um, you actually can use something called silk um, and they take your collars a little bit brighter. It's just kind of a better quality, uh, but silk gets expensive and this is free. <laughs> Uh, but it still works well, um, so we're gonna kind of run with it. Um, so first off, it's like, just like you probably learned in elementary middle schools, you never wanna put your, um, you never wanna cut out of the center of a piece of paper, um, cause then you kind of waste everything out. Um, so, and while this is free um, and I can get it, um, I still, we still need to make sure we're, we try to conserve as much as we can. Um, so I'm gonna take this sheet, <clears throat> I'm gonna get off of it. I'm gonna, Take it out. You might go in the hallway when you do this. Or 
whatever. But I want to find a corner that is pretty open. So I'm getting, I'm working on this corner right here. So you can see it. And there we go. So we're going to work off of this side. I have my um, batik here and I'm going to use a pencil. Um, try to use a pencil, try not to use a marker, because if you use a marker you end up, um, you might end up uh, seeing it when you're all done with it. <clears throat> so first step um, is, you know, again, I'm in, the, I'm in the corner area, so I'm not in the middle, is you want to have, you know, enough fabric over here so you can turn it over on top of here, because we're going to try to staple and stretch this either on the very top of this um, or on the very side. Remember, this is going to be your back. Um, so I want to make sure I have plenty of room. You don't want a ton, but you definitely want to have enough that you're comfortable with. You know, that's um, good there. It's like on this side, it's like, well, where am I supposed to, where am I supposed to cut it? Um, you can use a pencil, you know, and, and draw out, you know, a square that you're going to be at, or you can just go in with a pair of scissors right away and just cut it. So again, I'm staying off, I don't know, about four, um, four or five inches off the side. Now fabric, if you didn't know, once you start um, cutting it, you can just, you can just rip it. Um, you can rip it kind of fast, but if you go too fast, sometimes, uh, depending on the quality of the fabric, it'll all of a sudden skew off to the side really bad. But usually it follows um, along the line of, of the, the threads that make it up. So again, about four or five inches off to the side, just so you feel like you can comfortably bring that over. I'm coming up to a seam line right there, because this is the edge of a um, a flat sheet, and this is good. Put the rest of this back um, in the box or wherever I ask you to. If you don't feel um, like you can get another batik out of it, um, you probably show it to me because we also uh, use this sometimes when we, when we make paintings. Um, so we might end up using it, for, using it for that as well. So, okay, so the next part is to transfer your design over onto your project. Okay, next up, is that I have the design done, it's traced out a marker, I have my fabric all cut. Um, fine, again, comfortable spot, it might be on the hallway um, when you do this, but you also want some tape. Um, the reason why we put the tape down is because you want to make sure you don't accidentally um, you know, shift this as you're trying to trace it out. Um, I did not cut the excess off, I'm just going to leave that, uh, but I am going around and taping this down to wherever I'm working. You don't have to use like long pieces, you know, this is way too long. I'm going to cut this in half. Get this tape down. Next part, I'm going to take my fabric and you are going to do the same thing. So your design should be easily seen in there. Um, my fabric right now is a little on the um, wrinkly side. It's not that big of a deal. Again, I'm going to take tape and I'm going to kind of stretch the fabric over top of this. This is not meant to be la you know, like last a long time, um, but I do want to pull it slightly just to try to get those wrinkles out to make it a lot easier for you to um, trace your design. So I got the top and the bottom going off to the side, stretching this again. You might end up having to do the corners um, a tad bit as well. You know, if you have some wrinkles like I do, it's not, it's not that big a deal. Um, it's just, you really want to be able to see this design pretty easily. And if it's just all wrinkly, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to see it. So I did the middle of all the sides, um, and then I took another smaller piece of tape um, and stretched all the corners. Okay. Now you want to be able to trace this all in one shot. You don't want to try to line this back up again. So, so look at the time, you know, that you have in class. Um, and you just want to make sure that um, you have enough time to finish this entire thing. Sorry, a piece of tape came off. Okay, so now I can see this. Um, and I'm going to start going in and tracing my design. Now I noticed that I did not put a black outline. Or I did not go over on my outside edge with a, with a marker. So it is a lot harder to see. Um, but I'm going to 
take my time and, and do probably a time elapse on here so you can quickly see me just sketching this out. Okay, so I have my design all drawn out. Um, so it's, it, you, draw, you do it lightly um, in pencil because you want to, I mean, you're going to see some of the lines, especially when you kind of put the wax over top of it. But if you keep them light, you're really barely even going to notice them. If you go super dark with it or use a marker, um, you will notice it. And that is where you would lose some points. So, so lightly sketch this out. Um, I'm going to take all the tape off. Because next we're going to stretch it around your frame. Um, we have this piece and people say, well, what am I supposed to do with this? I would always hang on to this until you're kind of done with the project itself. Um, just in case something terrible happens and, and really, I don't think we've ever used it. Um, and depending on how you do this, I've actually also had students just, you know, take some markers. Um, they could even kind of test some color ideas out on here before they start inking it up. Um, so that's, that's perfectly okay. Um, and if you want to, if you want to take the risk, um, you can just throw this away and not worry about it. Otherwise, um, people roll it up. Um, and then you can use a piece of tape um, just to kind of keep it in place um, from what you just had, just so it doesn't come and run. And then you can just stick this inside of your cubby, okay? Otherwise, let's, uh, let's get the stretch. <clears throat> so, I look at my design, it's right there. I'm gonna flip this over. Like so. I know you can't see the bottom, but that's fine. I'm gonna be kind of turning this around quite a bit anyways. <clears throat> now I can still see my outside edge um, that's on there. If you can't, um, Try to get it so you can see it. And then I'm looking on the edges, trying to make sure I really don't see, remember that line is supposed to be on the inside. Um, so if you can see it on the outside here, then you have it way, um, way, too, way too close. Okay, so that's all centered. <clears throat> I'm gonna take this over. You are gonna be taking this off again um, so while we're going to be stapling this on, we're going to have to take it off, okay? So don't go crazy on how many staples you get. Um, I would probably do like one, two, three, four, five, you know, on the short end on this. So I'm going to pull it up a little bit. I'm not going to stretch it too hard. And I'm going to shoot a staple inside of there. Remember, our staple gun is over on the side. Um, if you are at home, you're going to be using push pins instead. Um, Remember with the staples, they're all over here. And again, the stapler, depending on what it is, a lot of times you stick it inside of here. Do not put all along this track. Um, and if you need some help, just, just holler. So one side first, and then the way you stretch fabric over a painting, um, as you line this up again, I can see that line right there. I'm gonna pull this, and this is where you want it kind of tight. Shoot another staple in there. So the middle, middle, pull this over. You never want to pull the first one too tight um, because it'll really skew your design a little bit. So I'm just giving a little bit of a pull, bringing it up, shooting a staple in. That staple did not go in all the way. Um, I think it's in enough, but if you feel like you can always take a hammer um, and do it even more. Bring this up. Now this time I do want to pull a little bit tighter. You know, my line is still pretty good. Shoot a staple inside of that. And obviously when you use a staple gun, you know, don't staple your arm or your hand or your finger or anything like that. So the main parts are done. Next is I'm going to put, you know, five staples. So one's here, two, three, four, five. So pull it up. Try to get all the wrinkles out of there. Flip this around. And you do not have to do this on the black table. You can go somewhere else. I do have a couple electrical staplers um, you can use. 
Um, so five, the side ones are probably out seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Pulling on the corner a little bit to make sure I don't have any wrinkles in there. One's already there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna do that one again, that kind of came off. Seven. Now you do have these corners. Um, I would, wouldn't worry about them. When we're all done, we go over a technique where you fold them into like a corner. I'm sorry. Um, we have this S part right here. Um, when we're all done with it, we have a tendency to put this kind of a triangular shape on here, which I'll show you. But again, we're gonna be taking this off. So you'll notice that your outside line is gonna be a little crazy uh, because of how we stretch it, that is so normal. Um, so, which means that as you come up with your design, you know, keep it mainly, you know, kind of in the center. Don't rely on extreme detail, you know, on the corners because they're really hard to line up, okay? Um, so this is all set. You are ready. Do not trim any of the excess off, um, but you are ready to use the hot wax um, to get your lines, and that will be the next demonstration. So, so good luck on this, um, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks again for your time.